Hi there, my name is Sinead. I am a mother to five children. I am a minimalist homeschooler. I am here in Australia and I have a blog called thesimplemama.com and she talks all the things about motherhood, child training, um, and minimalist homeschooling. I also throw up recipes in that as well. My, my love language towards my family is cooking for them. So um, there's lots of recipes on there and things like that as well, but that's who I am. And so today I wanna to talk about life skills. I want to talk about why I think it's crucial that you plan them into your homeschooling, especially if you're going to take on or if you're interested in minimalist homeschooling. In my very first video, I told everyone that I homeschool for around an hour to an hour and a half a day. And I only do that four days a week. So you can see that I do not spend a whole lot of time homeschooling. Areas where I like to hit the mark are consistency and effectiveness. And so with that, I have culled my homeschooling time way back. And I find that when I'm dealing with primary age children who are in the stages of learning to read and who are becoming competent readers, this is a very good um, structure for us. And it's something that I promote obviously on YouTube and in my blog. Now, something that I think is super crucial to go along with the minimalist homeschooling lifestyle is life skills. And so I have learned that by putting life skills into my homeschool plan and onto my planner and seeing them is going to help me take the time to um, go through and teach those life skills to my children. And these life skills have several sort of goals in mind. The first one being that by me teaching them to be more self-reliant, to be more responsible, more reliable, and just teaching them more skills around the house, that it, that makes them helpful to me. It makes them a contributor to the home. It makes them able to help me when I need it. And it essentially lightens my load. So that's obviously a pretty good motivator to, for me to get in there and teach my kids how to do things from making their own beds, to cleaning bathrooms, to weeding, to cooking, um, changing nappies of, of uh, babies. Like these things help me. And when you're going through day-to-day -day life with multiple children, having children grow into more tasks as they age is just um, a great, I would say, is just a great way to actually be able to not be afraid of having more children because um, I know that with each new addition, I have someone on the other end who has learned a whole lot more skill. So um, that's a great aspect of teaching your kids life skills. The other aspect of teaching your kids life skills is setting them up for their future adult life. Um, seeing their own families, I want them to be hard workers, good workers, honest. I want them to be responsible with their money, to be able to save, to be able to provide for their families, to be able to teach their kids the life lessons that they need, and also to be able to have a healthy marriage, which I hope that I can try and show my children. And so all of this comes from um, essentially living in a home that is slowly but surely chipping away at instilling at instilling these qualities into your children. Um, it doesn't come naturally. We all see plenty of adults who um, can be go through a really hard time or at least go through a really hard learning curve because they're not taught these things at home. And it doesn't mean that you're going to have perfect children and it doesn't mean that you're going to raise these perfect robots who never make mistakes as they get older or who don't have personalities that sort of interfere with how they go. That's not what I'm saying but I think that it's a parent's job and it's a mother's job to be teaching your children all the skills that they need. It's, it's the reason that they're living at home um, under you. It's the reason why we have at least, you know, between 16 to 20 years of them in our home to be able to teach them full time before they're going off into the world and they're taking the skills that you have imparted and they're going to start their own lives. And it's really important. And life skills is just as important, if not more so, than formal education in the early years because life skills not only does it give self-confidence and self-worth and creates critical thinking. It just creates that person who is able to step up 
to the task, who is able to um, understand their place in the world almost. And I think that a lot of children um, today lack that because they're not given the idea that they are reliable contributors in the home from a very young age. And so that is why from a very young age, I encourage and I teach my children to all the life skills that they're going to need. I'm going to create something that you can download, which is going to be a rough guide. I can't promise that I'm going to include every life skill known to man in this guide, but I'm going to give you every single one that I can think of and that I use and how you can start to know the signs of when your child's ready for that life skill and start slipping it into their homeschooling. So that way, if you're very new to the idea of teaching life skills, that you can use that guide and it's a guide of life skills by age so that you can choose your 10 per term that's in my planner to teach to your children. What I usually do when I'm using my planner is I will choose one or two big life skills like um, and I count a big life skill is something that takes multiple, you know, coming back and doing the same thing again. It can be cooking a meal um, or saving money or it can be if it's more of a personality trait that you're trying to adjust in your children. Those things to me are a big life skill because they take a lot of physical and mental effort on both your and your child's part to learn and to create habit and to create that skill base in them and so that's that and then the other ones can be a lot smaller like getting you know learning to get up on time in a six week to an eight week mark you can pretty much you know that can be something that they're really putting into practice themselves by then you don't have to be on them every day hopefully and so don't fill up your planner with 10 huge major life skills. They may have 10 major life skills to learn um, within a year or within two years, like within that age group. So just choose one and then choose a few more that you think you want to incorporate. And I'm sure that in your home with your different um, circumstances and responsibilities, you're going to come up with your own life skills that you're thinking my child can master that. My child can learn this because this is in our lives. So keep it flexible. And Before you go and you set your life skills and you're like, we're teaching this, this and this, the first thing you want to do is perhaps to yourself know what you want to teach your kids in the next six to eight weeks. I still say keep your life skills relatively short. Um, don't say that you're going to teach these three things in the next eight months because unless you are really keen on revisiting that all the time, which if you are, then do that. But um, if you're using my planner and the way I use my homeschooling, I like to keep track of how my children are going in the life skills section the same as I do in the homeschool section. I'm always taking notes. I'm always even looking at the attitude. How is their attitude going? How is, you know, because children can get pretty sour sometimes when it comes to doing chores. Some days they're great. Some days it's nothing but fighting and huffing and puffing and back chatting and just sourness. And I'll take note of that. And if I see that for more than one day, then I think, okay, this is a new problem arising. I am not going to put up with this. And this brings me to a pretty big I, a pretty big deal when you're setting your life skills is set your standards. This is probably number one. So I think that when you're teaching your life skills to children, don't be afraid to set high standards. Kids are pretty capable and they're as capable, I think, as we make them. I mean, I'm not going to ask my four-year-old, obviously, to cook a meal. That's ridiculous. But I can ask my four-year-old to clean a window with a spray bottle and cloth and I can keep calling them back to do it properly. That's not a bad standard. By the end of a week, they're going to understand that mum doesn't want any smudges on that window. That's their one job. Make them do it well. So setting from simple standards, um, these are things that, yeah, don't be afraid to raise your bar high. When I was first starting out with teaching my kids life skills, I did have the attitude of, well, he's only seven and his bed's like barely made and completely wonky, but what are you going to do? Um, 
But then it turned into having a nine-year-old who had the same bed-making capabilities. And I realized, you know, a bit late, and I suppose, was that, no, this is not him not making his bed because he's incapable. This is him making his bed this way because I'm allowing it. So have your kids make their bed the right way. Have them make the bed the way you want them to make the bed. Have them sweep the floor how you would sweep the floor. Don't allow them to do the simple tasks around the home, which is where life skills start, um, their way. You know, obviously, when you are first starting, there's a lot of praise, there's a lot of confidence building, and there's a lot of instruction. And this is why I like to count my home, my life skills into my homeschooling, because if you're teaching a five-year-old to do the dining room after meals, which is where I'm currently at with my five-year-old, then trust me, it's a whole lot easier for me to get in there and do that dining room myself rather than get the five-year-old to do it. The five-year-old takes ages. They're slow. You have to keep calling them back. You know, it's just everything is new. And so to do this over and over again is tedious. And there are some days when I just don't want to do it. And some days I don't do it. Some days I'm just like, no, I can't do this right now. You kids go play outside, I'm going to stay inside and tidy up. Like, I'm not saying that you can't do those things, but understand that when you're teaching your kids these things, it's a lot harder to teach them than it is to do it yourself, almost always. What happens is, though, eventually for me, I just know that once I have that five-year-old doing that dining room, it may take a couple of weeks for him to do it at my standard, but that means I have another worker. That means that the child who I did have during the dining room can be doing something else, which means that in my mind, I'm like, that means that I'm going to have more jobs done in the same amount of time every morning, which is just great for me. So... For me, that's what I'm striving for. I think like I said in my previous video, I'm having a baby in October and I'm preparing my family for that. I'm teaching my boys to cook more meals. I'm teaching them to be more reliable, to serve others better, um, to work together better because I know there are going to be a lot more occasions where I'm unavailable, where I'm stuck, where I'm feeding a baby or I'm super tired and I can't be at the same level that I am now and I want my children to be able to help me fill the gaps. And so that concludes just don't be afraid to set your standards and set your standards high because almost always your children are completely capable of reading of reaching that standard it just takes more effort from them so and once your children start to know this is what mum wants this is what I have to work for this is what I will achieve they're going to do it and it, what will happen is it will take them a long time at first and they'll just get quicker and quicker at it and more reliable and more responsible. So because I'm making the free printable, I'm not going to go into the whole long list of every life skill that you can teach your kids from the ages of four to 16. I'm not going to do that here on this video. Um, but I'm going to give you the four aspects of life skills. If you can cover these four aspects of life skills, you can really make your own. Doing life skills is starts at simple chores and using the four aspects, you can understand where you're going to take each one. You can also learn to assess your child, which is what I do a lot of in my homeschool planner. You know, assess your child and go, ah, because you're aware of the four standards of life skills that you want to achieve, essentially by the time they're moved out, you can't pick up on new little things to teach your kids or new little, um, ideas and ways to teach your children which are going to help them in their life. So the first aspect of life skills is self. So self is the most basic. It is self-reliance, self-care. It is making their own beds, brushing their teeth, knowing how to um, wash themselves, knowing how to um, fold their clothes, put them away, knowing how to keep their area clean, put their toys back, knowing how to put their plate away. Um, it's having and creating those completely self-reliant children where, which starts with basic standards. So as a three-year-old and a four-year-old, which is what I have in my home currently, um, as my two babies, um, they know how to put their plate away into the sink. They know how to put their shoes away. They know how to put their toys away, which take just a whole lot of repetition to teach your kids. But essentially they are on the very early stages of self-reliance. By the time they are seven, I will have a self-reliant child. The 
second aspect of life skills is others. Now, this one here is a little bit harder to teach because I have found that it does come down to personality. I have some kids with personalities where they have no problem serving others most days. And I have other children who have a big problem with serving others. Either way, you have to teach them to serve others. In the others category, they're going to be serving others. It means that when they cook a meal or if they serve a meal, or even if I'm serving out, for example, pieces of cake, if there is a child who will immediately snatch the biggest piece first, I'm, I make them slide that cake over to your brother because I don't want my children to be thinking of themselves first all the time. And what happens is, is of course, there's the tantrum, there's, well, he, why does he get it? Why don't I get it? But then the next time I'll watch them and he will automatically slide the cake over to his brother. But then his brother knows that he had the biggest piece last time. He also has to serve others and not just himself. So they'll come to the compromise of, well, I had it last time, so you can have it this time. And automatically, when you're constantly on your guard and when you're constantly on top of these others category, you are going to, you're not going to create perfect children by any means, but it's just that starting the ball rolling with thinking of others. So serving others comes in that way. Serving others also comes in the way of, yes, you are going to help me clean the kitchen and you're not getting extra pocket money for that. Yes, you are going to go and do more weeding than usual because I have plants to plant and no, you're not getting any extra pocket money for that today. It's learning that not everything they do deserves a reward for them, that some things that they're asked to do is just to contribute to the family, that we as adults know that there are days or even years in our life where we have to work harder than what we have to. We're, and we're not getting any extra for that. We're not getting any more money for that or a pat on the back or recognition. And you need to teach your kids that too. I, um, I love to reward my boys and they very, you know, they're really into saving money and buying their own toys and things like that. But I'm aware of over rewarding, of constantly creating this, oh, well, like I don't want to be throwing money at my children for every single extra job they do. That's not what I'm about. I will sometimes and other times I won't. It's really all about getting them to learn that, yeah, sometimes the work you do is rewarded and sometimes it's just to contribute to the family. And they have to have a good attitude about that. If they're sour and just, you know, obviously grumpy and they start sulking because they were asked to do an extra job and where's my $5, then I will actually give them more and more and more unpaid work until they realize that they could work forever in this home unpaid unless they fix their attitude. And, and so that's in the others category. So when you're writing down your 10 points, if you see that you have a child and go, okay, he needs to start to learn, he or she, they could start to learn that, you know, the world doesn't revolve around them, that there are some things in life that we have to do that we don't get recognition for or payment for and start incorporating that. And you are going to realize that in teaching that, you're teaching more of an attitude adjustment. You're teaching more of a good attitude of kindness and of empathy and of that self-awareness into who they are and what they feel. And is it good? Can I react on it or is it bad and should I try and learn better? It's that self-awareness that you're teaching a child that, yeah, the whole world doesn't revolve around them and nor should it. And so, yeah, that's the others category. The third category is the thinking category. So once you get to the basic things that we already know, like you have to teach a kid to cross the road. We're creating thinking skills in that child. We're giving them steps to take. Well, you want to introduce more and more of that. And that means you're giving them responsibility. It also means that sometimes you have to do some scary things, like let them do things on their own. This isn't always easy, even for me. My boys, who are 8 and 10, into the shops alone to go and shop for me. So obviously, not a whole shop, but I'll be like, I want this, 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 and this. I want you to go in. I want you to get a shopping cart. I want you to go and get these things. And I want you to pay for them. And I want you to come back. And I'll just sit in the car. And I know that they could fight like cats and dogs in there. Like, seriously, my boys, like, they, they got these, they got different personalities. So they do clash often. And I know all this. 
but I have to do it. And it's one of those things where I'm grateful now, obviously, because now I have a child who can go to the shop for me. And again, what pushed me into this was having this next baby and going, hey, there are gonna be some times when I do not wanna get out of the car. I'm on my way home and I need milk. So I don't wanna get all five kids. I don't wanna get like five or six kids out of the car to get a thing of milk. I wanna send my kid in. <laughs> and so um, you wanna teach them basic thinking skills. So So the fourth aspect is responsibility. Now, responsibility really does come into play with setting your standards. Do not allow your children to um, lower the standard. This is a child who is just lowering their own responsibility level from any age. A responsible child is a reliable child. And, you know, ultimately what I would love in the future is that when I have a 14 and a 15-year-old at home, um, me and my husband could go out without the children and know that we've got good, reliable, responsible babysitters. This comes with children who are responsible, who are able to take instruction the first time and carry it out, who are able to give instruction, who are able to analyze a situation that they haven't been told about and its dangers and what should be done, who are able to make decisions um, well, who are able to think through decisions, who are able to show up on time, who are able to take note, who are able to take control. These are children where the only way for you to teach them these things is to put them into these situations. And just like life skills goes with minimalist homeschooling, the homeschooling also goes with the life skills. If you have a child who can read well and who does spend a lot of time reading or if you have a child who is um, good with their hands and who spends a lot of time fixing things and working with their hands, if you have a child who loves to cook and who spends a lot of time cooking, you're increasing their thinking skills and their competency skills by spending time in something that creates thought and creates um, patterns and plans and following instructions and being able to think through different situations. Maybe you've made a mistake, how do you fix the mistake? So you really want to encourage a lifestyle where your children are always active and whether it's physically or in thought, um, you can encourage them all the time to do this. And this starts at a young age again. So my boy, my eldest boy is 10 and I'm really starting to encourage him to um, be able to take on decisions on his own. And at the moment, he lacks a lot of confidence in that because he's new to it. And he's he's going, oh, I don't think I can do that. You know, are you sure? And he doesn't understand it, but I'm like, go. And if you make a mistake, I'm not going, you know, you're not going to get in trouble. I'm, uh, I'm placing you into this situation and you are going to be able to do this. Maybe not the first time, but you will be able to do this and then you'll be able to do it forever and then we can move on to the next one. And, and so that's teaching your kids responsibility, which responsibility is going to come naturally, I think, as long as you set good standards, um, do it daily, encourage different learning different skills and encourage them to learn different skills that are outside their comfort zone because if you stay just in their comfort zone as adults they're going to be pushed outside their comfort zone and you don't want them to fail as soon as they're outside their comfort zone getting anxious overthinking and stressed so you want to really encourage your children to be resilient in different zones of life even if it's not entirely comfortable so how to sum up life skills is set a standard Know what life skills you want to teach in a certain time frame so that you can work through them. Um, and be okay with taking a day off school or cutting school short in order to teach that life skill. The second thing you really want to do is reward and build confidence. Make sure that when you're doing your life skills, make sure that with, when you're teaching your life skills, especially to young children, build their confidence. You know, give them lots of praise and clap and tell them that they did a good job when their job is finished to your standard, not to their standard. Um, you know, let them feel really good to be contributors in the home because uh, having that good, um, I suppose, like vibe in the home with children helping just feels good for everyone. It encourages everyone. And obviously when I have children who are four and five, I don't reward them with money. They get rewarded with praise, with baking treats, with um, maybe a little, yeah, like just, I think really at that age, praise is enough and building their confidence and just smiling with them and clapping with them and just telling them yeah, they did a good job when the job is done good. I want to stress that too. I don't, if my, if my kid has shown up and I'm like, 
look, there is like not one aspect of that tiny job that I asked you to do that is done properly. I'm not going to be like, great job. And you know, no, I'm like, I'm going to just say, get in there and do that again. <laughs> like I'm not into flattery, even with my kids. I don't flatter my kids. Maybe that's just sounds mean, but I'm all for giving them confidence building praise not flattery and flattery just like we're adults when we're just told things that we want to hear that most of the time aren't necessarily true don't teach your kids to expect flattery don't teach your children that oh well i did something even if it wasn't done well and i'm going to get praise for that because i did it don't allow that kind of feeling you are going to run into um some roadblocks when they're older if you start that kind of behavior to my child training series. I have had a huge um, uptake in my child training series, which is basically just a series of posts on my blog, thesimplemama.com, and an email you can sign up for, which will give you each post and how to use each post and instructions on what you can do that week. Now, if you sign up for the email, that is going to give you some more sort of behind the scenes, a little bit more of my honest like experience with raising kids, what I'm going through right now when it comes to raising my kids. Um, and at the moment, I'm just sort of sending out each post. But as we get a bit more meaty, I'm going to really give you a whole lot more of um, why I do things and how I'm doing things right now. I am currently, I'm always training my kids. Like there's never a day when I'm like, oh, my training's done. And I'm just, no, I'm always in some different stage of training my kids. And I'm always usually repeating the same stage of training my kids. And if you don't really know much about child training, it is a um, teach them, you know, how to speak with kindness, how to work hard, how to be honest, um, empathy, self-worth, you know, confidence, um, all these things goes into child training from um, a very young age. And I have had a really big uptake in my child training courses. I thought it was going to be one of those topics, which is kind of just like the unspoken. Um, but if you're interested in that, um, I think it would help you, especially if you're new to, um, you know, if you're interested in life skills and how I'm always talking about setting your standards. Well, that's very hard to do if you don't have any kind of system in which to enforce the standards, um, especially if you're dealing with older children. So if you're interested in all, then go to my blog post, which is the four pillars of effective child training. That's the first one. But in all my child training, 101 series which I have in a main as a link in my blog you can sign up for the email course and you will get every email the instructions the behind the scenes um, all those kinds of things um, that is available now if you want to sign up and oh, I want to do my next video on homeschool burnout I think that that is a pretty big deal in homeschoolers um, not probable and especially for us in Australia we are reaching the halfway point in the homeschooling year so it means that from here on out to the end is when we're more susceptible to burnout. So I wanted to talk about that and I have a blog post on that already, which I can link below. And so I will see you next week, hopefully with better lighting. All right, bye.